Welcome to the UChem tutorial on drawing resonance structures. In this tutorial what I'll do is do a series of examples in order to illustrate the concept of resonance and pull out some rules to help guide you in finding and drawing the best resonance structures. So let's begin by examining this molecule here that has 18 valence electrons. And what I'm going to do is connect the carbons, hydrogens, and oxygens here by single bonds first, and then I'm just going to give all the rest of the 18 electrons out to the atoms and the molecule. And just bear with me a little here. I know carbon is not quite happy here, but what I'm going to do is start with that structure and look at the formal charge on the carbon and then the oxygens. So the formal charge on carbon is going to be a plus one charge. It has three bonds and four valence electrons, giving it a plus one charge. The formal charge on the oxygens, both of them are equivalent in their structure. So they have a negative one charge, six valence electrons, one bond, and six lone pair electrons. That hydrogen over there on the left is happy with its duet, and it has no formal charge either. Okay, so let's take a look at the overall charge on the molecule. The hydrogen doesn't contribute anything. The oxygens each have a negative one charge, and the carbon there has a plus one charge, giving me an overall minus one charge, matching what was expected. However, that carbon has given us a little trouble. It doesn't have an octet, so let's go ahead and fix that. So we're going to put this little double arrow here showing me that these structures are equivalent to each other um, or they can be made from each other. It's not a reaction, it's just a, a structural rearrangement. So we're going to distribute all our electrons and what I did there is I had two electrons and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put them, take them away and put them down there um, as a double bond. Okay. So now I have hopefully fixed my carbon problem um, by giving it some more electrons. So let's take a look at those formal charges. And what I'll see is zero on the carbon, zero on that top oxygen, so I've removed its formal charge of minus one, but I've retained the minus one charge on that other oxygen, and that's fine because I wanted a negatively charged molecule. So here is the same structure. This time what I'm going to do, if you notice I pulled the two electrons from the top oxygen. There's really no reason why I did that one over the other oxygen, so I can do that on the other side and make an equivalent structure that has the negative charge on another of the, those oxygens. And so what I see here are three resonance structures for the molecule that I began with. And I'm just going to draw the line structures here for all of these so that we can examine those rather than the dots. And from those line structures, I'm going to start looking at some rules for resonance structures and some definitions here. So resonance structures are equivalent structures of a molecule with, okay, the same connection of atoms. So if you take a look at the connections, I have the same pattern of overall single bond connections. They have the same number of electrons, so there's 18 electrons in each structure, and the same overall charge. They all have a minus one charge overall. So when you're drawing different resonance structures, you notice that I didn't change the overall connection of the atoms. I just changed how those electrons were distributed once I had them connected in a certain pattern. So what we're looking at with resonance is a different electron arrangement rather than a different connection of atoms. All right, so I'm going to reset my structures a little bit here, and we're going to evaluate these to determine the best structure. So the first thing I want to look at is octets and duets, and I'm going to do a little pass-fail on all of these little tests that I'm going to show you. So the structures on the right pass the test. They all have octets for, or duets for the hydrogens for every one. But that on the left, we failed on the uh, carbon right there. It only has six electrons, so it fails for that test. I'm also going to look for few formal charges. The structure on the left has three formal charges. The structures on the right have only one. So we have a pass on the right and a fail on the left. We're also looking at the small separation of charge, meaning we're going to try to minimize the formation of positive and negative charges in the same molecule. So we pass on the right, but we fail on the left. 
We also want a, the greatest electron density on the most electronegative atoms. Those greedy atoms, the ones that are electronegative or want to hog or move all those electrons over to them. And even to the fact that they're going to sometimes get more negative formal charge. Uh, we've done that on the right and the left. Uh, however, on the right hand side, that's, those structures over there are the better ones because they have more stars. They've passed, all right, to a greater degree. So the best structure that we saw were those on the right. And now what I'm going to do is take those rules that we've learned and I'm going to give you some another example so that we can examine what are some better structures. And then you can come back to my last example and take a look at that again with a little new light. So we're going to look at the chlorate anion now. Its total valence electrons are 26. And I'm going to start drawing structures. So here's a, a set where I have the chlorine in the middle and the oxygens on the outside. And I've distributed all my electrons. Everybody's got octets. We're going to look at formal charges, plus two on the chlorine, minus one on all the other um, atoms. Those oxygens have a minus one charge. I'm going to see if I can get rid of that separation of charge and make a better structure. So I'm going to do those electrons around everybody again, just like I did on the other structure. And now I'm going to move some electrons in to form a double bond on the chlorine and the between the chlorine and the oxygen. And when I do that, I'll remove one of the negative formal charges from oxygen, one of the um, plus charges from chlorine, and I've made it a molecule that still has that minus one formal charge. But now I have a little less separation of charge. Let's see if we can make that a little better. And I can do that by making two double bonds. So this time I'm going to move in not one, but two pairs. And Remember that chlorine, the reason I can do this, I have more than um, eight bonds here. So what I'm looking at are more than an octet around chlorine. And that's okay um, because chlorine is a larger than, um, than period two on the periodic table. So because of that, we can have an expanded octet on chlorine so we can play around with this a little more. So what I have is seven valence electrons for chlorine. I have five bonds and I have two lone pair electrons. That gives me a, a zero formal charge. I have a minus one on that last oxygen and I can see an overall minus one charge. So if we look at our optimizing um, procedure here, we still have octets and duets. We've made the formal charges smaller by removing um, those all for one, except for one, which we knew we were going to have to begin with. We have a small separation of charge, no longer any positive charges. The greatest electron density is on oxygen, which is more electronegative than chlorine. So we're all good here on our rules so far. So that seems to be our best structure. Now I'm going to see if I can do some more with that. So if we take a look at the structure, I just drew one structure. And now what I'm doing is I'm drawing more. So I'm moving around. All right, I'm going to move around some of those double bonds. So in the top left structure, that's the same as the structure with the star below. And then what I've done is I've just gone ahead and moved that negatively charged oxygen around to putting it on the other oxygens in the structure. Just like I did on the structure I drew on um, the previous example, there was no reason why I chose to move in one set of electrons from one oxygen over another. I could do that with any of them. And that gives me those three equivalent structures I see there on the top. So another criterion for better structures is if I have more equivalent forms, like those I've drawn at the top there, then I have a better structure. There are more options for that molecule that are equivalent that distributes those electrons around much more nicely and delocalizes that charge and spreads it around the whole molecule, making that a more stable structure. So this gives us the total rules. All right, we're looking at those five things where we want to evaluate a resonance structure. Go ahead and draw and keep narrowing them down like that until you can find the best overall structure with the most equivalent resonance forms.